Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents. Got a little something, something. Yeah, we're going to highlight these areas in yellow because yellow. Yeah, isn't that maroon? No, that's not maroon who sings yellow. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Ladies and gentlemen, what we need you all to understand is there is something that's going on that you guys have not been paying attention to. So we're going to give you a shortcut. Okay, the title of this video says everything in and of itself. We're going to give you a shortcut. What's the shortcut? We're going to teach you, by the way, we're going to explain to you every single thing that's highlighted in yellow so that you understand what's going on because y'all just getting on my nerves. Okay, but this is an issue. I want you all to understand something. Hold on. Got to get my screen to clear up. I, I was just having a conversation with someone and we were having a conversation of what they should have known and what they could have known. Okay, and let's see. Wait a minute, I, you ain't got no without recourse. What's going on with that? I don't need without recourse because I have it right here, you ignorant morons. Okay, and I forgot to put the three. Dag nabbit, Daesh. Okay, anyway, that's the without recourse section. But I don't need to sign it without recourse. I don't mind them coming back. It's a government obligation. See, the above United States government obligation. Okay. Government obligation remittance coupon. If it's Penny Mac savings, if the name of the company is Penny Mac savings, then you put the name of the company, Penny Mac Savings, and then you put the account information, or if it's a mortgage, you put the street address without the zip code. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why you're doing this, because all property in the United States is owned by, well, your document explains it. Your document says that the ownership of all property is in the state. Do you see that? And then it puts the congressional record. See, Senate document number 43, 73rd Congress, first session, congressional record, March 9, 1933, House Resolution 1491, page 83. You see, the original bill is the original intention of Congress. So we put that. But then we put obligations in the United States shall be receivable for all public dues. They shall be redeemed at the Treasury Department of the United States or at any Federal Reserve Bank. 12 U.S.C. 411, insurance of re to reserve banks, nature of obligation, redemption. And we put the laws. Just copied it straight from, uh, what's the name of that thing? Uh, oh, God, Cornell Law. And I took out all the language that didn't mean anything. And I put it in a sentence. Just a sentence. Look, you are hereby notified that I hereby tender payment for the above reference obligation of debt, and because this debt concerns property of the United States, it is deemed by law and operation of statute to be a government obligations and must be handled in accord with the dictates of statute. I accept the obligation on and in behalf of the United States of America and hereby make assignment of the obligations to the United States Treasury Department on and in behalf of the United States of America as authorized by statute. You are to present this remittance coupon to the United States Treasury Department or any Federal Reserve Bank to include federal, any Federal Reserve member bank to redeem the value of the obligation, 12 U.S.C. 411. As per the terms of the contract, this shall serve as notice, my notice of change in terms of contract canceling and suspending any acceleration and or associated penalties for paying the U.S. government debt instrument obligations for value through acceptance pledging of assignment in full. Just as simple. You don't need all the other language because that says everything. Wait, 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 wait. You said you're going to explain the, the, the money order. 
Well, okay. First of all, you don't need a banking routing number. <laughs> you didn't need that in the first place. You didn't need that back when Jimmy cracks corn. What? Jimmy cracks corn? Don't worry about it. But wait a minute. What, 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 what happened with Jimmy cracks corn? I don't care. What do you mean you don't care? That's right. I don't care. But I want to know what happened. What, and so if you don't care, I want to know what happens when Jimmy cracks corn. I don't care. Why you got to be like that? You need to leave me alone. Okay. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let's see if we can get you guys a better understanding. The bank says that you owe a debt. You are not understanding what's going on with a debt. So let's pull up the code so that you get it because we have to do some explanations. Okay, so watch this. We got Dana Dane in the background and he's singing, there ain't no love. A collateralized, we didn't ask about no collateralized debt obligation, but this is a tax term, people, people, people. A collateralized debt obligation is so-called because the pool assets such as mortgages, bonds, and loans, pay attention, and loans are essentially debt obligations that serve as collateral for the collateralized debt obligation. Okay, people, I need you all to hold on. Hold on. What is debt obligations? Let's look at the meaning. Loans, bonds, leases, and other debt instruments owned by a corporation. Debt obligations are carried on the company's books as a liability. Ladies and gentlemen, it talks about a corporation. A debt obligation is not just those that are carried by a corporation. But hold on. If a company says that you owe a debt, they are now referring to it as a debt obligation. Remember, all property in the United States is owned by who? I don't know. The ownership of all properties in the state. Oh, it's owned by the state. Yeah, by virtue of government. By virtue, it doesn't say that. It just say by the state. Because you don't need to put that. So shut it up, ladies and gentlemen. Because it is a government obligation, all properties owned by the state, when you receive a debt instrument, what's a debt instrument? A contract for which you sign and promise to pay. That's a debt instrument. Is that a debt instrument? Are you sure? And when you make that promise to pay, everyone, you must pay. But you guys have not been paying. I've been trying to pay. I just don't make enough money. There is no money. What do you mean there is no money? The United States Treasury says there is no money. This is their website. It's an official website of the United States government, legal tender status, Treasury Department, United States Treasury. This is the actual website. When you go to that website, you'll see that U.S. coins and currency, including Federal Reserve notes and Federal Reserve bank notes are legal tender. Federal Reserve notes have no value. They are not redeemable in any commodity. They have no backing by anything. This has been the case since 1933. They have no value for themselves. So I can't use them to pay a debt because they don't have any value and you cannot pay a debt with something that is valueless. Well, you're using your hour style money order. You're saying it has value. Oh, I'm not using the money order to pay the debt. No, I'm using the money order as a government remittance coupon because it's a government obligation. What do you mean remittance coupon? What's that mean? Well, let's do that because some of y'all are new booties, so y'all don't know how to... Do research. Every word I use, I'm using it for a reason. I'm not just making up words here. I'm not trying to make it sound nice and fancy. I am using words for a reason. Remittance coupon. Source capture transforms the way business customers handle payments associated with remittance coupons. With this solution, your customers can capture checks and deposit funds quickly and easily from their place of business. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a way for you to handle your payment. We're doing it through the Treasury. We're giving the Treasury authorization to go ahead and handle the government obligation. Okay, see this? Employer remittance coupon, Ohio. Coupon redemption. That's all we are doing. It's redeeming a government obligation. Payment, remittance coupon, payment submitted by. Okay, we're not putting all that language because there's no need to. There's no need to. 
Oh no, there's some information I can't give you because some of the information I made proprietary for SATCOM. So sorry, sorry. All right, remittance coupon, ladies and gentlemen, this is a government obligations remittance coupon. By the way, I put myself as a non-taxpayer as defined by statute. Okay, just that simple. Okay, now you're not going to do your for six hundred thousand dollars. You'll do it for twenty percent above the value. So basically, if it's five hundred and twenty-four thousand dollars, I'll do it for six hundred thousand dollars. Just that simple. Just just to be doing it six hundred thousand dollars. Now, label as a government coupon, beneficial interest holder, and citizen of the United States of America. I come in as a United States of America citizen. Why? Because I have full faith and credit as a United States of America citizen. As a United States citizen, I don't have any credit. United States is a corporation. Okay, I don't have any credit coming in under the United States, but I come in as an American citizen, a non-taxpayer. Sorry, as a non-taxpayer, you cannot be a United States citizen. Don't you guys understand the all caps name means taxpayer? Wait a minute. Hold on. Get out of here. What you doing here? Get out of here. Get out of here. Oh, there's another document I'm creating. It's a cover letter. All right. Let's do remittance coupon so that you guys will understand because I know that you guys are still not getting it all. Okay. Watch this. Okay, taxpayers living abroad. If you are a U.S. citizen or resident alien, and excuse me, the rules for filing income, estate, and gift tax returns and paying estimated tax are generally the same whether you're in the United States or abroad. Do you people understand that? If you are a United States citizen, you are a taxpayer. For instance, let's say you moved here from a different country and then you have you have a social security number and then you move back abroad to your original country. Are you bound by taxes of your income? See, this thing actually from the irs.gov site says your worldwide income, no matter where you go in the world, your U.S. citizen, that all caps name. Oh, no, it's the Social Security. It's the all caps name, you ignorant mother. Okay. A U.S. taxpayer is a United States citizen. Okay. So please understand, I am a non-taxpayer. And as a non-taxpayer, I am documenting that I am not a United States citizen. But I'm an American citizen, and that's, I say, a citizen of the United States of America. That's me. I'm not telling you guys to put that there. Everybody else, uh, blah, 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 blah. Knock yourselves out. But that's what I put. Then I put my intentions. You must establish your intentions. Intentions, the above United States government obligations is hereby accepted and acknowledged, and I assign and pledge the total value of the obligation to the United States of America through the United States Department of Treasury to be redeemed for value and receivable at the Federal Reserve, the Federal Reserve Bank, and or any membered bank and or national association as prescribed by statute. The Act of March 9, 1933, the Act of May 12, 1933, 12 U.S.C. 411, 18 U.S.C. 8, 1, uh, excuse me, U.S. U.C.C. 1-308, U.C.C. 3-419, and the intentions of the United States Congress concerning the current serious national emergency. Discharging government obligation. All of my bills are government obligations. Are you sure? I don't think that's what it means. Really? Let's go back to 18 U.S.C. 8, because some of you guys, 
I know you're so sweet the way you try to outthink me like I haven't already thought about all of this pay attention let's let's get you guys some 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 heightened security the term obligation or other security of the United States includes all bonds certificates of indebtedness national banks Federal Reserve notes Federal Reserve Bank notes coupon coupons <coughs> coupons United States notes, treasury notes, gold certificates, silver certificates, fractional notes, certificates of deposit, bills. All of your bills, ladies and gentlemen, any check that you receive, any check that you write, these are all government obligations. No, because it says authorized by officers in the United States. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, do you know that the law allows you, pay attention, the law allows you to receive bills and pay bills. The law allows you to write checks and receive checks. Okay, that's why it's either going to be drawn upon or authorized by an officer of the United States. Well, who's the officer? These are the officers right here. The members of Congress who enacted this stupid act. But wait, hold on. That's only one act. These idiots right here who enacted this act. Let's uh, get our uh, growth because. Don't say a word. Because I already know what you think. Flying next to you. But ooh, I feel so. Sorry. This is Deborah Cox, ladies and gentlemen. That's my girl. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, these are the officers of the United States. Excuse me, get that out of the way. These are the officers of the United States who authorized this. The United States Congress authorized this. They're the ones who authorized you receiving a bill. You're receiving a coupon. You're receiving a remittance. They're the ones who authorized you receiving checks and drafts. But you're not getting it because you want to look at it through your own eyes, through your own understanding. This has nothing to do with your understanding. Your understanding has nothing to do with the reality of things. This says the term obligation refers to any security, okay, of the United States. Well, what's the security of the United States? Anything that's traded on the market. What do you mean anything that's traded on the market? Anything that's traded on the market is a security. The United States market is owned by the United States. It's controlled through the SEC. That's the government officer who authorizes that trade. It's security of the United States. Pay attention. Authorized by officers of the United States. Okay? Or issued under an act of Congress. Do you understand? Or issued under an act of Congress. Ladies and gentlemen, we're operating under an act of Congress, the Emergency Bank and Relief Act. And according to Congress, I did not write this, people. I did not write this. Tell them, Deborah. Ladies and gentlemen, let me say it again. That according to Congress, again, According to Congress, since March 9, 1933, the United States has been in a state of declared national emergency. These proclamations gave forth to 470 provisions of law. We're operating under these provisions of law. So these are government obligations. We are going to tender payment. See, amount of obligation. You see, see what I did there? Amount of obligation. Somebody asked me, does my document state that it's an obligation. Pay attention. Obligation. 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 Where's another one? I know there's another one in there somewhere. I know this one right here, but I ain't talking about that. All right, there's the other one. Obligation. At least six different times it mentions obligation. Why? Because we're letting them know that this is a government obligation. But remember, the law only requires that we make a payment. They're going to come in and say we didn't make a payment. We're going to say, oh, yes, we did. And we're going to show proof 
that we made a payment. Can they get around it? No, because our obligation was to be tendered to the United States Treasury. Now, unless you have something from the Treasury saying that they have denied this obligation of the United States, which they can't because 12 USC does not give them the right to refuse a government obligation. No, that's not what it says. Hold on. You guys doubt me? Wait, hold on. How dare you guys? I'm offended. What makes you think? Wait, hold on. Let me let me show y'all. Let me show you something. Watch this. 411. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I meant just to change that to a 2. I want y'all to pay attention because we're going to go by the letter of the Lizal. Federal Reserve notes shall be obligations. Oh, by the way, hold on. You think this is just talking about Federal Reserve notes, right? <laughs> no. Okay. No. This is saying the said notes. Pay attention. Shall be obligation of the United States receivable by all national banks and they're used for public dues taxes. Now remember the treasury says these things have no value. It says they shall be redeemed in lawful money on demand. Any of you tried to get your Federal Reserve notes redeemed in lawful money? What did they tell you? They not tell you no? That's how you understand. Okay, let's get back to this. There is nothing in here saying the treasury can refuse to redeem the lawful money. They don't have the authority. Nothing in any of these laws. By the way, I was looking at the, uh, there's another act out there, 31 USC 51 something. Where's that stupid law at? Give me one second. It's in the uh, tender payment document. This is the one that they will try to throw back in your face, people. And that's 31 USC 5103. Ladies and gentlemen, 31 USC 5103 is the one that talks about legal tender. Uh -uh. That law doesn't get to define legal tender. First in line, first in time. Okay, see, December 23rd, 1913. Okay, now you know it didn't say Federal Reserve notes back then. Well, it, technically it did. It said Federal Reserve note because it was a different style of Federal Reserve note. Okay, but if you go and you read this act right here, you'll understand. Has anybody gone back to read this act? I know what act that is. Isn't that the Federal Reserve Act? That's Patty, y'all, and she's singing. Well, look at that, two days before Christmas, the Federal Reserve Act, wiggity, 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 wiggitypedia. Now, why would they pass an act two days before their so-called pagan holiday? Anybody? Why you call it a pagan holiday? Oh because it's a pagan holiday. All right, anyway, Federal Reserve Act, okay? An act of Congress that created and established the Federal Reserve System, the central bank system of the United States, and which created the authority to issue Federal Reserve notes, commonly known as the US dollar, as legal tender. The act signed by President Wildrow, 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 get in here! Wilson, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Wikipedia. That's just a general basic information. But as I told you, that's the Federal Reserve Act. The Federal Reserve note was a different Federal Reserve note. Okay, that's why Congress spoke about that Federal Reserve note. But understand, the law that did this also recognized other notes as legal tender. This wasn't the only legal tender in the United States. Remember, gold and silver was legal tender at that time. So you have to understand what was going on. All right. This act just allowed the legal tender to be redeemed at the treasury. Okay, these are not the same legal tender notes that we have today. It's changed, but let's get back to the issue at hand. Ladies and gentlemen, there is nothing here that authorizes the treasury to reject a government obligation. Government obligations shall be redeemed in lawful money at the United States Treasury. That's why people can negotiate their treasury bonds, their treasury yields, all of that stupid stuff at the treasury. 
Where do we send it at the Treasury? The Comptroller of the Currency and the Bureau of Public Debt. That's who handles this. But let's get back to this note. There are seven things that an instrument must have. It must have your name, that's one, or the name of the party. It must have the address. There you go. Those are two. It must have its own unique serial or identification number. If you write five of them, they have to have five different serial numbers. Serial numbers is one you create and you want to make yours unique. So you see, I got AXPOE. I have no idea what AXPOE stand for, but that's the number I created for this bill. I put some dashes and I put some numbers in there. Why? Because we have to make sure that there's no other duplication of this particular item. It must have a title. Number four. Got a title. It must have a pay to the order of party. This one is pay and pledge to the order of the name of the party. Ladies and gentlemen, number five, it must have a courtesy box for the dollar amount. Number six, it must have the dollar amount written out in words. Because if you just wrote out the dollar amount, people can add zeros. So that's why you write it in words so they can add zeros. And we put $600,000 in certified credit by the non-taxpayer at par. Okay. Then we put those intentions in this section right here. These are instructions. This is the instruction section. We don't need a memo, but we put a memo, discharging of government obligations. And then it needs a signature line. There are your seven points of references that must be included in the instrument. Okay? It doesn't have to be a check. Doesn't have to look like a check because we're not writing a check. This is not a check. Okay? It's not a check. It's not a tumor. Okay? Now, the thing that gets the item tendered, ladies and gentlemen, I told this to someone and they didn't understand. When I paid off bills in the past, I sent them a letter letting them know that the law requires that I make a payment. The law does not require that I make a payment as to how you dictate payments are to be made. The law requires that I make a payment in like species of what was lent to me. Ladies and gentlemen, they did not give you legal tender. If they had given you legal tender, you'd be rich. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Peggy Scott, and she's singing about Bill. Y'all remember that song? Well, anyway, let's continue to understand something. The law only requires that you make a payment, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on. Pay attention to what I'm saying. The law only requires that you make a payment if they return the payment to you and then they want to foreclose. Now it's time to go to court. And now you bring into court the fact that this is a government obligation. Don't be afraid to stand in front of the judge and say, I paid them according to the way the statute is written. The statute says that my property is a government property. It is a government obligation. I have tendered payment to them. Those of you who I've helped and you're in court now and we did an hour style money order, you are to be presenting that money order to the court letting them know that this was a government obligation and you tendered payment. Don't argue whether or not there were funds in an account. You argue whether or not they negotiated the instrument. If they haven't negotiated the instrument, then you have to ask for a dismissal immediately because this court can only determine whether or not payment was tendered. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the only issue the court has to deal with is whether or not you made a payment. That's the only issue that's being played here in all of these courts. And guess what? You guys are not showing that you made a payment. You're letting them argue with you as to the species of the payment, which is not the issue. If they're challenging the species of the payment, then they will have to show where there was an agreement for you to pay in a different life species. And by the way, you killed that with your notice of change in terms of contract. See? 
As per the terms of the contract, this shall serve as my notice to change in terms of the contract, canceling and suspending any acceleration and or associated penalties and paying the United States debt obligation debt instrument for the value through acceptance, pledging of assignment in full. That's what that statement is for. So if you are headed to court and somebody is saying you owe a debt, send them a payment, people. And then go into court and let them tell you that that's an unacceptable form of payment. Then you'll have to give me another form of payment. Oh, you can pay in a check. Excuse me. You can pay in a check. No, I'm sorry. That's not what we agreed upon. A check has to be backed by funds in an account. Well, we're in a banking holiday. I can't use checks during the banking holiday. What's another form of payment? Well, da, 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 da. no, I'm not arguing with you whether or not we're in a banking holiday. I'm bringing up the fact that you must give me another remedy. That remedy is unacceptable. I do not have checks. See, checks, they bind you, they lock you in, they really make you slaves. Well, you can pay by credit card. Excuse me? By credit card? I don't have no credit cards. We're in a banking holiday. We're not here to, I'm not here to argue with you whether we're in a banking holiday or not. That's not, we're not, I'm not going to allow you to change the subject to that. I just said we're in a banking holiday. That's a fact. I'm not going to argue with you about that. I will not argue with you about facts. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in a banking holiday. That's what the Federal Emergency and the National Emergency Acts were all about. A banking holiday. Hold on. Uh oh, it won't let me do any more. Uh-oh. Yeah. It don't have banking holiday. Hmm. And I know the word banking holiday is in here. Well, okay. Let's see if we get our banking holiday. Because that's the whole proclamation of the act was a uh, banking holiday. Because the declaration was the president declaring a banking holiday. I know it's in the uh, U.S. bankruptcy document. Nope, no banking holiday. Oh, there it is right there. Oh, bank holiday. It didn't say banking. I added ING. Hold on. See? Okay. And there's only one occurrences, but all banks were closed for it a banking holiday. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. The banks were supposed to reopen on March 9, 1933. I mean, March 13, 1933. But here's the problem. With the banks supposedly supposed to reopen on the 13th, what did Congress say? Hold on. Not that one. No, no, I went all the way back up to the top. So now I need to go down right there. It says, since March 9, 1933, the United States has been in a state of declared national emergency and federal emergency. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been in a banking holiday. So we don't need to argue with them about that. The, the issue is going to be whether or not you made a payment. That's the only issue you're there in court about. Every single time you have an unlawful detainer, every single time the trustee says they're getting ready to sell your property. You have to send a payment. If you have sent a payment, then now you need to go into court arguing the fact that you sent a payment and that the bank received the payment in the time allotted by law. If you are current with your mortgage and you make a payment with an hour style money order, remember, no routing number, no checking account number because it's not a check we don't need to put a routing number on our instruments okay we don't need to go that route anymore people so what you want to change your policy but you can't change the policy regarding government obligations okay they can't change the policy regarding government obligation because they would have to change the banking holiday act 
the March 9, 1933 Act, and the March 12, 1933 Act, and USC 411. They can't do that because it would have too wide of a rippling effect on the entire system. So we need to discharge our government obligations, people. Some people are going to understand this and some people are going to make this work and it's going to work. And then they're going to try to make a business out of it. And they're going to try to keep the information to themselves. And it's okay. Ladies and gentlemen, go right ahead and do that. I put out information. I give you information. I send you on a certain track. I, I fill in the blanks that you did not have. That's why you're here. You're here to get the information that you hadn't been able to come up with because that's the information you're missing. Man, he always has the answers we are looking for. I mean, I, we were stuck. We didn't know what else to do. And then he did a video and now we are taking off. God, we're rich. Okay, that's what's happening. The selfish people are going to get theirs in the end. They don't see it yet. They, they're, they're making a little bit of so-called money. And they don't even realize they're not making any money. If we were to come together, I mentioned that about the individuals who are Moors. The Morris has congressional recognition as a whole. Congress has recognized the Moors. Not just the, the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. Not, not that. The where Congress actually said on record about the Moors. That is government recognition. Congress is a segment of government. If the Moors would just come together under the fact that they've been recognized by the United States government, they can now come in together as a group, not as segmented different segments of organization because they're so divided and so broken and so segmented that they're not going to ever achieve anything. Ladies and gentlemen, if people learn to come together, now, there are going to be some times in our future that people are going to come together and mass together as one, okay? That's going to happen, but that's going to be a bad thing. But if you want to discharge your debt, everyone, come together. You figure out something, and look, some of you, I, I, I bless your little hearts. Some of you are trying. You're saying, well, I figured this out, and I figured that out. Uh, yeah, that's not going to work. This has to be, this has to be, ladies and gentlemen, this has to be the people who have knowledge of these acts and these laws and who get rid of all of those other things they got in their head. They want to bring up the Buck Act and the Act of 5587043, when there's only one act you need to be focusing on. The March 9, 1933 Act. Okay? And how whatever it is you're trying to accomplish is associated with that act. Because that's the foundation. That's what got everything started. Well, no, it was actually the, the Training with the Enemies Act of October 6, 1917. No. That act was <clears throat> amended. On March 9, 1933. Nine, March 9, 1933 is the foundation. So moving forward, you have to use your foundation. We don't care about the court saying this and the court saying that. We're dealing with the intentions of Congress. The courts don't make law. Been telling that to people all the time. And if you pay attention to the case law of the courts, they are saying they're relying on law. So we showed you the cases. So, ladies and gentlemen, an understanding, an understanding, an understanding, an understanding of how to get rid of that mortgage, how to get rid of that debt. I can't do anything any better for you. I can't give you all the details because if I gave you all the details, I'd be giving up proprietary information. But I thought you just said that we have to come together and blah, blah, and blah, blah. And look here, you ignorant mother. Sorry, I have to keep myself under composure. <sighs> For those ignorant people out there who don't seem to understand, SACOM keeps this information proprietary as an organization, and that is my contract with them. I cannot divulge information that is solely for SATCOM. 
Some people want to make it, as I said before, they want to make it that I and SACOM are the same. You are the most ignorant of the ignorant. But that's, that's okay. Because you are the United States citizen who deserves everything you got coming with your ignorance. But I, the best I can do for all of you right now is tell you that your mortgage is a government obligation. Many of you have not made a payment on your mortgage. You see this document that's been sitting up in front of you for the last five minutes. I left it in front of you for five minutes on purpose so that you can copy the format. You don't have to copy the words exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, well, I need to know how you created the document. Can you show us how you created the document? It is real simple. Pay attention. It is real simple. The first thing I did was I went to my Microsoft Word. I don't have Microsoft Word. Then do the best you can with whatever you got because I don't give up what you don't got. Ain't got nothing to do with me. I click insert. I click table. When I click insert, I click table, I select on this, and I pick this right here, just the one. I don't pick two, because that's when I'm writing court documents. I don't pick three, because that's when I'm writing ledgers. No, I just pick the one, because that's who I am. I am the one. I'll be the one. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, here's the document. But wait a minute. Oh, uh, how you put the other boxes? You had another box in there. You see this right here? Text box. TikTok, TikTok, hurry up, text box. Draw text box. Draw? You mean I can just sit up here and draw a box and just stop it right there? What does that look like? That's how you do it, ladies and gentlemen. It really is that simple. Can you show us that again? That's easy. Rewind the video. Anyway, the first thing I do is I click insert. I click tab or table. I click the one that says one table. I take, see that little box right there? There's a box. You take that and you bring it down. See, right there? And then you go over here, go back to home. Home, almost home. Oh, no, 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 insert. Sorry, we gotta do insert again. And because this is in a way, let me move it. Text box, see it? Oh, it's a text box case. I love text box cases. And you click down here down here not up here down here draw text box oh that looks like a big box no just kidding we're not gonna draw that box we're gonna draw a different box insert uh oh I went back too far let's redo that right there okay now we're gonna draw a different box we're gonna do insert let's do it the right way let's not play we're just gonna make a box like that if we want to make it bigger the only thing we got to do is come to this corner and bring it out Okay, if we want to make it shorter, come to that corner and bring it out. If we want to make it smaller, come to that corner, bring it up. All right, everything else is just typing in lines. See, name. Okay, hold on. You can't use tab, not while you're in a box. Keep it in a box. That's the number for my instrument. Hold on, go up here. There we go. That's my number, just making it up. Then I got to go here and I got to click down the enter button. And then I put the address. Okay. And then right here, I come all the way over because your instrument has to have a date. Uh-oh. It went too far. Okay. That's my date. That ain't no date. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, after I do my did that did that did that did that did that did that did I do my pay to the order up. And when I do my pay to the order up, there's gonna be another line, and then I'll be uh and then that says the top is paid to the next one's order up, and then I don't do the line. What I do is I do this. Pay attention. This is going to be difficult for some of you. I click underline. You see how I highlight it from here forward? And then I click underline. That's This is what happens when I write down the dollar amount in capital letters. 
Uh oh, it didn't do it. Sorry. It was supposed to underline it. So let's do that right. All right. Anyway, now that I've done the underline, now there's one thing I'm going to do right here because this is necessary. I'm going to change this to eight. Actually, with me, because it's a check, I'm going to make that six. Okay. And it's going to be bold because I want it to be highlighted. And after this, because this is the pay to the order of section, I'm going to click the colon. And then there's the a dollar amount. Then after I do that, I'm going to go down one. I'm going to go under here. I'm going to start where this line starts. And I'm going to put. But the problem is, you see how big that is? That's too big. That's too big, Bob. Bob's big boys. Now serving, blah, 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 breakfast till dawn. They're serving breakfast till dawn? That's right. And then they'll talk about Joy and Jill and Margaret. Oh, you're trying to be funny. Shut up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, my intentions is going to be bold. I'm just a man doing the best that I could. Oh, Lord, please don't make me be misunderstood. Yes, my intentions are good, ladies and gentlemen. See, that right there is too large. We're going to make that. No, we're going to do this six, too. Six and enter. And then we're going to do memo. Then we're going to put our little colon. Then we're going to put a line there. But again, you're going to put what your memo is. Then you're going to space it. Oh, you're being spaced out. Then you're going to put your little X. Then you're going to put your little period. Then you're going to put your little line. Uh-oh, wrong one. Sorry, hitting the wrong button. There's my signature line. There's my instrument. That's how simple it is. No, I'm not saving this jump. Because I already have it, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? Now, many of you, are not going to do any research. You're not going to confirm any of the things I said. What you're going to do is you're just going to write this up and you're going to just start sending it out because you, 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 you just want to get rid of it. And you deserve everything that you have coming back. Do not email me telling me what problems you ran into. That's not my job. I'm not going to help you get out of your problems. Now, if you by any chance were successful in this, then we might be able to communicate. Why? Because I will take that information and I will share it with the rest of the public. Oh no! I, and if I have some success, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, be getting in touch with you because you're gonna tell everybody everything. Look here, you ignorant, stupid moron! Now that's not very nice, is it? You're getting this information because I'm sharing it with everyone. No, no, shut up! Because I got a lot of people talking about how they don't want me to share the information with anybody else, but you ignorant mother that say that are coming here and getting this information because I'm sharing it with everyone. If I wasn't sharing it with everyone, you wouldn't have access to it because you wouldn't have figured it out because you're not even on the same level. So stop with the ignorance. No, the reason why I'm not doing it is because you share the information with people. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't share people's personal information. You give me personal information, nobody else in their grandmama gets it. To this day, the individuals who applied for SACOM in the last hiring for SACOM, nobody else has seen any of their personal information, their affidavits, their applications. Nobody's seen any of that stuff. Those who sign up for SACOM, for the SAPAC, 